Ivan, pronouns he, him, calling in from Crispy Angus. Nice toasted cows, y'all. What? Uh, <laughs> recently converted, but still believes in higher power. Wants to know what led the hosts to atheism. I think this is a fantastic call for people listening in. Ivan, you are on the Atheist Experience. How are you doing today? Hey guys, doing good. Yeah, thank you for for taking my call. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I just had that question. You know, I went through in about a year and a half uh, deconversion. That was probably the you know the toughest year and a half uh, you know I've had with you know as far as faith goes. And but um, yeah, my you know my question was like um, I I don't. I don't believe anymore in all like the, the religious claims. The, those have kind of been debunked in my mind as far as like, you know, when you, when you apply philosophical or moral tests or uh, even historical tests. Um, but the, the thing that's, that hasn't quite gone yet. And I, I don't know if it needs to be gone, or not, but it's, I, I still kind of hang on to this, to this idea that I still believe there's, there's a God or there's a creator, but I just feel as though the religions are all kind of man's attempt at explaining what we don't really have good enough evidence to explain. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I wanted to see like, you know, what, what brought you guys to the point where like, you know, you're not necessarily in this same middle ground that I'm at, but you know, you kind of cross that threshold and say like, Hey, there's, probably not any God at all. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? I yeah, think yeah. A, a good thing for you, like, at this point is to, you know, you could, we can go through the same whole thing of, like, well, you need evidence, and, then like, where's your evidence for God and everything <laughs> like that? Shot. It is punishing. Uh, the, the, but, like, we can go through the same, you know, rigmarole, but also I think it's important for you to ask yourself, if you're still holding on to this God belief, if there is a God, what kind of God is it? Mm. Is it a good guy or is it a bad guy? We just mentioned in the last call, you know, about hunger. 25,000 people, including 10,000 children, starve to death every single day. That's the world this God is running. Is that a God that's worthy of your worship, even if it is real? Now, of course, saying that God isn't good isn't saying that God isn't real, but it will maybe help break through that barrier a little bit to where you can start asking some seriously critical questions about the validity of this claim and that might help you further along down the way. You know what I mean? That's literally what I was thinking. I was I was just about to say like, okay, so so what does your god do? Like what is mm -hmm. your god all about, man? Because if ultimately at the end of the day, like you do, you take some time and you sit with it and you realize like I all I'm basically ascribing to this entity is existence. Like, all I'm saying is that my God does exist. It's out there, but it, it doesn't care who you have sex with. It's not really concerned about, like, if you murder or anything. Like, it doesn't care about that stuff. And then it's kind of like, Inert. well, yeah, like, your mm -hmm. God's, it's yeah. nothing, man. What's you can just drop that. That's easy, right? But it does take that time for you to actually go, what is this thing still, you know? Um, but, yeah, where do, where do you sit with that, Ivan? Yeah, I, I kind of, so, so like, yeah, the, the, definitely, you know, the suffering in the world has, has played a role in it. And I guess the way I've been able to explain that to myself, you know, who knows if I'm right or not, but <laughs> uh, the way I've been able to explain it is, is like the only, I, I guess, yeah, one conclusion would be, yeah, there, there's no God, but the, the other conclusion is kind of like this idea of, you know, life almost being, um, like an experiment of separation. Um, and I, I, I say this in kind of a way of like almost as if life, like the purpose of our life is to help us grow our, or of, of this life is to help us grow our consciousness. And one of the, why, you know, the next steps. Yeah. I, like yeah, why, why? Why would that experiment uh, be happening? I, I don't know. Like, experiments are really cool until you're the one being experimented. Yeah, for sure, especially you know I mean? against your will, right? It doesn't feel great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, is God is God just like not positive that like J Mike and Forrest and I we just our consciousness is only going to grow this much, you know? Yeah. But like, it's I I don't I I see where you're coming from for sure because there is I think for a lot of us, especially in a religious headspace, growing up like that, like you do kind of have this yearning for 
something out there, some answer. I mean, for years, I used to think that, like, birds showing up on my fucking driveway in the morning was, like, a sign from the universe. Yeah. Oh, I didn't boy. believe, like, like you know, Jesus or anything was talking to me, but every single time a leaf would fall or a car yeah. horn would honk, I'd be like, ah, oh, that must mean something about what I'm supposed to do tomorrow, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and it's it's just, it's this innate thing that we do as, as people. Like, we look out into the world and we just, we see the bush shake and we're just like, well, something's probably shaking it, you know? But, yeah. like, that something could, could be the wind. It, it doesn't have to be an agent that's actually, you know, paying attention. It's interesting you say the bird thing, because I had, like, the same thing with my, my grandpa loved cardinals and stuff. So, you know, me developing, like, you know, what I believe and whatnot, I'd have that. But I never lost anything now with the view I have, because mm. it just reminds me of my grandfather. Yeah, you just have so a nice I, memory. There's nothing that's, like... L- like gone or lost there, you know. But I mean, I'm also someone who doesn't. I think Dan or someone said this on Truth Wanted, but I don't want to watch a movie that lasts forever. Yeah, so, like, exactly. you know, I'm already in that kind of mode where, you know, I think finite time is what makes things valuable in the first place. But, right. um, but yeah, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I lost anything with that. So, yeah, definitely. What do you think about all that? Um, yeah. Well, I, I, I got a question for you, for you guys. Like, because I guess another factor that kind of influenced. Um, even even my deconversion, it was actually, um, you know, listening to people talk about their uh, near-death experiences. Now, you know, I'd say that, you know, if you listen to some of them, you know, they think it was a grain of salt, I guess. But, like, you know, it seemed that a lot of people did experience, you know, I, I guess you could say the, you know, the, the loving God, uh, whether they were theistic or non-theistic. And it, but this God didn't really fit into any, you know, religious category that we have in, in this world. And, it, and and I guess I'm I'm having, um, I, I know, kind of peering into like the spiritual side. It's you know it's it's almost impossible from our point of view. But it's I I don't know. I I feel like if if that many people are having kind of these similar experiences when they uh, you know okay. flatline and they're brought back and they tell us a yeah. uh, story you do you want to know like what there's some substance there do you you want to i so okay so i'm i'm, I'm kind of with you okay but do you want to know for me yeah. the thing that clearly jumps out as the through line through all of these experiences. Because I, I get you, Ivan. You're like, but man, SR, I've, I've heard so many of these wild ones, man. There's all kinds of, my buddy had this two weeks ago, all of that, right? How how are all these people wrong? Well, let me, let me tell you what I think is the obvious, clear, clear through line through all of these that connects them. His people, man. His humans. As, as people, we're all kind of really similar at the end of the day and that's really great and one of those things that's really really similar is this squishy substance in our head and when that thing starts to fail it doesn't matter where in the world or when in history that's happening it fails similarly it's 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 going to ultimately have similar consequences for people whether whether you're you're flatlining in china or whether you're flatlining you know here in austin texas nobody do that by the way but you still aren't allowed out. don't let him tell um, you what to do yeah you, you live your you life still and can't and leave. leave no you still can't leave uh but yeah so like i i get you ivan you're like how are all these yeah. people having these experiences but it's because at the end of the day j mike and i are pretty similar enough that if he stubs his toe I kind of get what he's going through because I've stuffed my toe. And so, like, if Forrest and I both have a brain aneurysm, we might see similar wacky, crazy things. Like, because our our brains are both failing, man, and they're both really, really similar. Um, And I would definitely look more into that stuff, man. Go watch a bunch of Forrest stuff talking about the brain and Shannon Q. Like, that'll do it, man. Yeah. There's there's yeah. a ton of info out there, and especially yeah, if you're yeah. if you're interested in that specific thing, uh, look up some cool stuff about this fun, uh, fun little part of the brain called the anterior cingulate gyrus. It's real big on that kind of like one more time anterior cingulate gyrus. It's r- directly behind the prefrontal cortex, right in here. If you split your brain, do a little sagittal cut right in there, and just look right inside, you see a little bloop, uh, and that's that's where that guy is. Um, and I, I'm grossly oversimplifying this next statement, but it plays a big part in like empathy and empathetic feeling, and like when you see somebody that you care about being hurt. You also 
don't literally feel the pain but kind of have the same emotional reaction to the pain, that plays a big part in that kind of thing. And there's some really, really cool studies in that that might help kind of develop the secular morality that we were trying to poke at with the last mm -hmm. call as well. Anyway, Ivan, this has been really yeah, productive, yeah. I think, and I hope this helps you, yeah. and I hope you call us back and give us some updates on how your deconstruction goes.